got lots of points. Look at this, look at all the flowers. This is yellow centiflor. Pretty amazing because you can pick it all at once. So it's kind of a new class of tomatoes that we've developed. But what's unique about the centiflors is it's kind of opened up a whole level of evolution in tomatoes because they have so many flowers. Bees love them too. In the spring when there's not a whole lot out here yet, there's a lot of tomato flowers and the bumblebees and all the bees are just so excited about it. So to me also it opens up a whole nother level of food for the pollinators. They seem to be pretty disease resistant although I mean, we have a very diverse garden and don't get much disease pressure here. We have a dry summer, pretty mild fall, so. In terms of how many growers all over the country and the world have grown them and raved about them, I think that's the best uh, success story you can really have. I got lost in a corn patch when I was seven years old. That was the first time I felt free in my life, it was in a cornfield. We need to have a change. How are we going to do it? We better grow seeds. We better grow seeds that are good, that are vital, that make food. What do you want to have? Nutrition. You want to have prime nutrition every time you make a choice. And prime adaptation, and you want to have the ability to put together what has happened in the last thousands of years as a selection of certain kinds that build our food system from wild plants. Now what are we going to do with the wild plants when they're all disappearing, when we don't have the resources? The local resource base has been destroyed. The trees have been knocked down, the animals have been killed off, uh, and then you have to start pumping and bringing in water, you have to bring in food, you, you, you lose the vitality. People you know that you love, that you work with on a daily, weekly, monthly, lifetime basis, that you see that the world is better because of what you do together. Right? If it was not so ego-oriented and dominant and gorilla-like, but more like bonobo-like, a lot of the hippies realize we'd much rather make love than war. We don't want to make war. We want to stop fighting and killing and destroying the planet and the people. And the... How are you going to do it, right? You, you can't buy your way into this. Right. It's part of that the something has to matter enough that you're willing to say, we need to develop our own healthy system of food and fermentations and rare plants that give us the vitality not to be afraid of all the insanity that's running rampant all over the place. The place is nuts. The education is a joke. You would start kids off in a garden doing yoga. I'm so honored to work with Don, Don and Mario. They have produced such amazing work already. I mean, they have. You can go to university to hand out PhDs for picking piece of pissing in a bucket, you know. These people have already made new varieties and broken open whole different breeding systems and, and flowers and vegetables. Wow. Kind of further development on high anthocyanin and sweet corns. Originally, Mushroom uh, started making a whole bunch of them, and one of the parents to this one was Double Red, uh, which he took at least six different corns that all had different uh, levels of the dark red trait. So one of them had dark red silks and some of them had dark red seeds and some of them had red plants. So combining all those genetics took a while, uh, decades. Uh, and then taking that and crossing it to multi-stocked corns um, to try and get what we're calling bush corns or something that has some of these have three or five tillers coming up and just a couple cobs, but these came from plants that had eight tillers and some of them had up to like 20 cobs. 
smaller cobs, but it's a delicious sweet corn. And they came on over like a month. So each plant you could be picking, you know, every week fresh corn would be coming on. So that's kind of some of the uh, ongoing thing here is getting nutritious sweet corn, so high anthocyanin. When it was some years back, they tested the anthocyanin, and it was something like 2,000 times what a blueberry has in the, this corn. And you can eat a lot when you eat sweet corn, so that was like trying to bring more nutrition into sweet corn. So this is now further development in trying to get as many different lines with as many different architectural characteristics and bringing, yeah, nutrition into the breeding program. So a lot of the fun part of seed saving is just letting that breeding process happening. And then the better you get at noticing unique plants, which a lot of times comes from growing enough things to knowing what is actually unique, um, that's you another skill. You unique ones and follow them and see where it goes. So that's half and of the often breeding. often it is like the bees did it, but we're out here planting a lot of diversity and so. And you end up doing a lot of roguing because you are taking away what you don't want the bees to cross with. So that's a lot of, of the process and especially with some of the flowers. I mean, there's definitely different things with peas and different things where we know what we want to cross and the bees aren't going to do it, so we're going to do it. But when there's so many levels of possibilities, with flowers and with different things, you want to open them up and you don't really know what's going to happen. You want to let that happen on its own sometimes. Any gardener could do it and it's going to happen in anyone's garden. You're going to see new stuff happen, evolution's going to happen. And especially the more you grow, like we were growing multiple types of species of zinnias, so the more times you bring in diversity and make things possible, that's when you're going to see more you know, things happen. And obviously if you grow zucchinis and pumpkins and delicatas, you're gonna get a mess and that's okay too, but it's not all gonna be great and you can do things more intentionally with uh, some, yeah. some knowledge. But in general, yeah, it does happen in everyone's garden because that's what we've noticed. The more thing, even if you don't let save the seeds, if you let things flower and fall down, evolution is happening. What it's all about is completing cycles. And also we're about uh, being able to have our own self-sustaining things. So that's part of self-sustenance is having seeds that you can plant that you can keep regrowing. The more breakthroughs you have when you save something and something unique happens, the more excited you get. And the more you do, the more breakthroughs you have. This year we're growing 15 new spicy peppers and uh, among other things, but just trying to grow up new stuff every year and see new cultivars, whether whatever they are. I don't open a lot of catalogs and really like peruse, other than that, that I've noticed, this spring I noticed a lot that a lot of the old school ca companies are like focusing a lot more on hybrids. There's just a lot more organic hybrids that a lot of people are using, I feel like. In certain categories, it becomes more and more important to make open pollinated lines when like everyone's depending on hybrid broccoli yeah. or whatever, you know, like that's silly. So we don't need to do that. And what I like to tell people when I'm explaining like what public domain plant breeding is, is it's creating our generation of heirlooms. Because people take for granted what heirlooms are. And it's that a lot of generations ago, people made public domain varieties. And all that was is what they grew up stuff and they kept passing it down. Kept and selecting the, it for whatever yeah, they liked. They didn't they... have a concept of ownership because there wasn't that. It's pretty simple and if we don't do that, then we don't have anything to pass down to our generations. I think working for the public domain is creating you know, an example of what a fair and honest society should have, which is certain resources that everyone can have access to and water and food and are those things. So that's why we work for public domain seeds. Organic farming is not the end. Organic farming is a step early in the process of development of a healthy food system. 
It means you know how to pay attention to what you grow. When you see something unusual, you don't throw it away. You say thanks. You save the seeds. You grow it the next year. If you have the touch with the breeding, you can really move it ahead in another way and you can support a robust public domain. The thing is available to all of us.